They say that little boys are made of snips and snails and puppy dog tails. Little girls are made of sugar and spice and everything nice. I submit that all kids are made of brains and hearts and boogers and farts. And the perfect toy for everyone is literally bound to bring home the fun. Hi, I'm Dan Larson and this is the history of My Pet Monster. Thank you to Ridge for sponsoring this video. The Ridge wallet is light, sleek, and industrial. It doesn't fold or create an awkward bulge, and it changed my whole pocket situation. Enough with the back pocket. Ridge is designed to fit easily into your front pocket. See, most people are still using wallets designed in the 90s, the 1890s, carrying around old receipts, gift cards, and hotel keys in a disorganized mess. You wouldn't be caught dead with a flip phone. Why are you still carrying that same kind of wallet your dad carried? The Ridge wallet holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash, and it's made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpockets. It comes in over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. But don't take my word for it. Listen to their 30,000 five-star reviews. The durable materials mean each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. You could buy this one wallet and carry it for life. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back if you don't love it. Get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash toy galaxy. That's ridge.com slash toy galaxy and use code toy galaxy. Link in the description below. Thanks again to Ridge for sponsoring this video. My Pet Monster was a series of plush toys, a cartoon, a live action movie, and a full assortment of related merchandise that first released in 1986. It is a toys to life product from a time when the most advanced technology available was a child's imagination, also known as artificial intelligence. <laughs> My Pet Monster was produced by American Greetings in 1986 through their character design and licensing branch called Those Characters from Cleveland and their toy manufacturing branch called Amtoy. American Greetings, Those Characters from Cleveland, it's all the same company responsible for brand characters like Holly Hobby, Ziggy, Strawberry Shortcake, Care Bears, Mad Balls, and Popples. The central figure, the pet monster, is a large 26-inch plush doll with yellow eyes, blue fur, horns, claws, and molded plastic teeth and nose. It comes with a pair of orange vinyl breakaway shackles that are large enough to be worn by the doll itself or the kid playing with it. Chain the monster's hands together. Chain your hands together. Chain the monster's hand to your hand. A unique way to bond with your toys, but quality bondage nonetheless. <laughs> My Pet Monster was intended to be a cross-demographic toy, albeit a controversial one. Typically, dolls were marketed to girls. Boys got things like robots, guns, and trucks, or robots that turned into guns and trucks. In 1985, Hasbro broke that play pattern by introducing a 23-inch doll for boys called My Buddy. My Buddy. Wherever I go, he goes, my buddy. My buddy. My buddy and me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know that was still in there. Cabbage Patch Kids were making bank for the third year in a row, and while my buddy didn't set the world on fire, it did do top 10 sales in 1985. It was popular enough for Hasbro to introduce Kid Sister to reach the entirety of the kids' market, and it certainly inspired other toy companies to consider any missteps Hasbro might have made along the way. <laughs> Cabbage Patch Kids were omnipresent in the early 80s. As a rough and tumble kid who was into things like eating dirt, on command belching, and armpit noises, the wholesomeness of Cabbage Patch Kids was like a stick in the eye. Except that you would rather have played with an actual stick in an eye than be caught dead with a Cabbage Patch Kid. That universal sentiment, Cabbage Batchlash, is what powered the incredible success of Garbage Pail Kids, a line of parody trading cards introduced by Topps in 1985. Garbage Pail Kids took the saccharine sweetness of the Cabbage Patch and baptized it in slime. Turns out farts and slime and bugs and monsters are things that kids, all kids, are super into. Toy companies all over were competing to give kids the gross out merchandise they wanted. From Mattel's Boglin's Stinkor and Slime Pit to Coleco's Sectars. Theaters were full of monsters like Gremlins and Mogwai, Skeksis, Ludo, and all the amazing designs coming out of Jim Henson's Creature Shop. 
American Greetings knew the way to a kid's heart was through their fascination with and humor inspired by involuntary bodily functions. Like shitting their pants out of intense fear by accident or just because it's funny. With all of that creative inspiration in hand, those characters from Cleveland got to work. My Pet Monster was created as an avatar that kids can transpose their id into, take all of their most terrible impulses, and act them out through a tactile imaginary friend who will aid and abet them in every adventure, no matter how dangerous or ill-conceived. My Pet Monster ain't no narc. My Pet Monster actually breaks the physical chains that keep him in check the way every kid wishes they could stay up late and watch TV, or not have to do homework, or not go to school, or choose to eat ice cream for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And My Pet Monster wasn't alone. It brought along a whole collection of friends, including a full-size monster called My Football Monster, with a jersey helmet and shackles that fit on your original monster as well. Smaller puppet-style monsters, Gwonk, Wogster, and Rark, with their own shackles. International markets would see a larger variety of sizes for the big two monsters, as well as new characters like Yiplet, Yaplet, and Beaster. In a reversal of standard operating procedure, My Pet Monster was developed as a potential live-action television show before American Greetings really knew what they had on their hands. A one-hour pilot episode slash direct-to-video movie called My Pet Monster, a live-action video cassette was released in 1986 to coincide with the release of the toy. Taking advantage of a booming home video rental market, the movie introduces My Pet Monster as an ancient spirit trapped within a statue unearthed from an archaeological dig site. One day, the scientist who discovered the statues and committed his life to understanding them, Dr. Snyder, is burdened with escorting a group of school kids on their visit to the museum where he works. One of those kids, a boy named Max, gets a little too close to one of the statues and finds himself host to the monstrous ancient spirit. He is physically transformed into the blue fur monster, complete with monster powers like advanced monster hearing and incredible monster strength. Max's sister Melanie is one of the few people other than Dr. Snyder who knows his secret. Over the course of the ensuing 50 minutes of recorded video, she does her best to help Max figure out what happened to him while evading the efforts of Dr. Snyder to capture him and use him as proof that he is a great scientist. Max can't quite control when he turns into the monster, but it is likely connected to whether or not he is hungry. Will he become a monstrous hero like the Hulk as his sister encourages him? Will he continue to be pursued by Dr. Snyder both as a monster and a boy? We'll never know, but as the movie ends, Dr. Snyder begs one of the other statues for monster powers and is, seemingly, granted them. Max was played by Sonny Beeson Thrasher. His sister Melanie was played by Allison Court. Colin Fox was Dr. Snyder. Remember those names? We'll see them again. The monster is played by Mark Parr. Yeah. My pet monster. He's bigger than big. When he fights battles, he always wins. Yeah. And he's your friend, too. He breaks his chains. Put him on you and break away, too. Yeah. With my pet monster, you're busting loose. Yeah. And scary. And helps people too. And he's your friend too. My pet monster plays all day. Tough. Awesome. Looking great. And all your friends will want him for their friends too. My pet monster has breakaway chains from Amtoy and American Greetings Company. The media blitz didn't stop there. American Greetings partnered with Ellipse, Nelvana, and High Tops Video in association with Golden Books to produce a 13-episode animated series called My Pet Monster. This interpretation of the character skewed a bit younger and more fantastic. This time around, Monster is an actual pet of Max's as opposed to something that Max transforms into. Monster is from a place called Monsterland, which is either a parallel dimension or a place so geographically remote that it can only be reached via a magic door-shaped portal. Monster's primary arch nemesis is another Monsterland resident, a bigger, meaner, scarier creature called Beaster, who is trying to capture and bring Monster back to Monsterland. On the human side of things, Max's neighbor, Mr. Hinkle, is desperately trying to prove that something strange is going on with Max and his alleged toy monster doll. See, Monster, or Monzi, as he is affectionately nicknamed by Max's sister, now named Jill instead of Melanie, is a harmless, inanimate 26-inch doll when his magic shackles are fastened to his wrists. If a situation gets a little too hot and Mr. Higgins or anyone other than Max, Jill, or Max's friend Chucky get too close to discovering the truth about Monzi, on go the cuffs to make sure that Monzi's true identity remains a secret and no one takes him off to do science on him. Monster was played by Jeff McGibbon, Beaster was played by Dan Hennessy, Max was played by Sonny Beeson Thrasher, Jill by Allison Court, Colin Fox is Mr. Hinkle, those last three returning from the live-action film to take on animated roles, Allison and Colin, along with a few other cast members, would team up again just a few years later on the Beetlejuice animated series, with Allison playing Lydia Dietz. 
My Pet Monster got the full brand treatment. Coloring books, storybooks, puzzles, lunchboxes, party supplies, a Ben Cooper Halloween costume. If you're going swimming, don't forget your assorted My Pet Monster inflatables for safety and for radicalness. My Pet Monster the movie was released on VHS in 1986 and spent 17 weeks on the top 10 rentals for kids. If you look, you can still find it today on the secondary market. In 2008, Kaboom Entertainment released the complete animated series on DVD in Canada. In 2009, Trinity Home Entertainment released the complete animated series on DVD in the US. Reruns aired on Teletoon Retro in Canada in 2011, but today you can watch all 13 episodes of the cartoon on the Retro Rerun YouTube channel here on youtube.com. In 2001, Toy Max released a new 22-inch talking My Pet Monster with a few aesthetic adjustments but retaining all the charm of the original. Now Monster can say things like, I am your monster friend. I'll protect you. I'm really strong. Let's wrestle. Whoa, you're really strong too. <laughs> Standard stuff. In 2012, American Greetings sold My Pet Monster and Popple's two Saban brands who brought Monzi into the digital era. They released a My Pet Monsters mobile app that let you raise your very own monsters Tamagotchi style. The last update to the game was in 2013. If you don't have it already, you're probably not going to get it. My Pet Monster was an influencer long before Instagram was a thing. Several homages, knockoffs, bootlegs, and legitimate market contemporaries followed in its wake. Things like cuddly ugly dolls, Los Temblors, and My Monster Bud. In January of 2012, Adidas introduced the JS Roundhouse Mid Handcuff Sneaker. Designed by artist Jeremy Scott, the sneakers were criticized for invoking slavery with a shackle clearly designed to attach to the wearer's ankle. An understandable critique if all other context was removed, which it was. Adidas was compelled to issue a statement ensuring the public that, quote, Jeremy Scott is renowned as a designer whose style is quirky and lighthearted. Any suggestion that this is linked to slavery is untruthful. End quote. No reference to slavery was intended, but technically Adidas had not licensed My Pet Monster and therefore couldn't just say, these are obviously My Pet Monster shoes. In 2015, Warpo Toys initiated a Kickstarter campaign for a doll called Don't Cuddle the Krampus. Krampus, the yin to Santa Claus's yang, one of them is a jolly elf from the North Pole rewarding kids with gifts for a year of good behavior. The other is a horned goat man who collects naughty kids in a burlap sack and beats them with wooden switches as he takes them back to his lair for rehabilitation. Don't Cuddle the Krampus had a familiar look and feel. It even comes with a pair of wearable shackles. The Krampus doll was not only designed to evoke the look and feel of the 1980s gross out era and things like My Pet Monster, it was actually designed by people who worked on the 1980s My Pet Monster doll. Unfortunately, the campaign was not funded and no Krampus dolls were produced. In 2016, for the 30th anniversary, Creepy Company released an assortment of products including a various enamel pins, shirts, and a six-inch vinyl figure in regular and shackle orange. The regular version was limited to 500 pieces, the orange a scant 100 pieces. In 2018, Hasbro was named Global Master Toy Licensee. And then they just went ahead and bought the whole thing from Saban. My Pet Monster, Popples, Power Rangers, Julius Jr., Luna Petunia, Treehouse Detectives. Just put it all in the bag and let's go. Hasbro till all are one. <laughs> In 2019, Super 7 released My Pet Monster and My Football Monster as part of their reaction line of roughly 4-inch action figures. Both figures have their shackles attached so they can't come to life, but those chains can be broken. The rest is in your hands. In 2020, Funko released My Pet Monster Pops and Mystery Minis, and just this year in 2021, Super 7 released a special flocked version of the same My Pet Monster reaction figure in a television box presentation, recreating the cover of the video cassette box art for the live action movie in 1986, completing the circle of life, the journey from the 80s into the future, and wherever Hasbro is willing to let it go from here. The fan community still lives and breathes monster breath. In 2020, a trailer for a fan-made film called Meet My Pet Monster was released by JS Company Productions. Their mission was to create the film they always wanted to see, issuing modern computer-generated characters and the clumsiness of the 1986 film's full-body suit. Monster is made from a variety of practical and animatronic puppets and original My Pet Monster dolls. You can watch the trailer now on YouTube. The trailer has a potential release date of Christmas 2020, but that may have just been for the trailer itself. Some toys in the 80s thought grossness was their ally, but they merely adopted it. My Pet Monster was born in it, molded by it. It is the alpha monster of life-size Play Pals. It is the original breaker of chains. Tough, awesome, your big scary friend. Oh, and he helps people too. 
Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you haven't heard, we started a second channel called Toy Galaxy 2. That's T-O-O. -O. Head over there and subscribe for stuff we don't post here. I'm gonna take a little break. <laughs> <laughs> Think about some stuff I need to do later. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon or become a YouTube channel member. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below if you had a My Pet Monster or My Buddy or My Size Barbie or any giant kid-sized toy that you could play with and how important shackles were to that relationship. On second thought, skip that. Skip that. Who would win in a fight? Live action My Pet Monster or Alf when a both are played by a human in a fursuit? My money's on Alf. Monster may have the speed, reach, and agility, but Alf's got the brains to keep the cuffs on and just let sleeping monsters lie. <laughs> <laughs>